Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make a heat haze effect in Unity's shader graph. In fact, I'm using that effect on this video right now. I'm Game Dev Bill, let's get started. Now I've seen heat haze a lot in real life because I live in Texas where it's currently 103 degrees outside. For those of you that don't use Fahrenheit, that's about 310 Kelvin. To pull off this effect in games, there's basically three things we're going to do to the art. First, we're going to wiggle or maybe warble it a little bit. Then we're going to constrain that warble to the hot part of the screen. And then lastly, if we want to, we'll blur it. Before I start making the graphs in this video, I wanted to mention that there's a written version of this tutorial on my website. So to copy paste some code or dig into some more details, look for the link in the description to gamedevbuild.com. We'll start with a simple unlit graph, since I'll either be using this as a sprite or as a full screen effect. I'm going to add a texture 2D input and call it main text. And then in the reference, I need to set that to underscore main text. That name is really important. You have to get that right for the uh, sprite renderers to feed in the right texture. Now I'm going to give it a default texture with some stripes in it, just so I can visualize my effect within the shader graph, but that won't actually affect the output. And with that hooked up, we have a functional starting point. Now most of the work in a heat haze effect is going to be done on the UVs. So I'll start with a UV node and then I'm going to feed that immediately into a split and then a combine just to get my framework set up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave the Y alone, but we're going to be messing with the X coordinate. So to do that, I'm going to need to add some value to the X. So I added an a addition node right here. The most straightforward example of this is a sine wave of the Y coordinate. It's not what we'll actually use, but it's a good way to show the concept. So let me jump to a completed version of that just so you can see it, and then we'll actually make our real graph. I'll ignore the multiply nodes that just scale our math. At its essence, this is a time value subtracted from y and then fed into sine. That's then added to the x coordinate. That can give us a very basic heat haze effect. But let's move on to the real graph. First, I'm going to declare a bunch of inputs so it's easier to tweak the effect from the material. Strength, speed, cell density, angle offset, and angle speed. Then I'll set those to default values of 0 0.005, 0 0.125, 50, 30, and 10. Then I'll drag them into the graph for easy access and close the blackboard. To start on our actual logic, I need something to drive the add node that we already have in place. So I'll start with a multiply that's going to multiply by our strength by some value. That value is going to be the noise that we use to offset things, and I'm going to use a Voronoi node. With the noise node in place, we can hook cell density up directly to that input. The other two inputs, though, I'm going to do some logic before setting them up. First, we're going to do the angle offset input of this noise node. So I need to take the time input, but this time I'm going to use sine time so that something kind of goes from negative to a positive value back and forth. And I multiply that sine time by our angle speed. So it'll go from negative angle speed to positive angle speed. And then I'm going to add that. So I need an add node here. I'm going to add that to our angle offset. This gives me something that can go from one value to another without ever going below zero, because angle offset looks really weird when it's set to zero. Next, we'll control how the UV inputs to this node are driven. I'm going to start with my speed input feed it into a multiply, and then I'm going to multiply that by time. This is just going to be regular time because it can continue on indefinitely. I also need the actual UV coordinates to work with. So I'll go down below, copy paste, and bring them up above. Once again, I'm going to feed this into a split and then immediately into a combine. The X is going to be unchanged with the Y I'm going to have change over time. So I put on a subtract node and feed my time into that subtract node. This will make it look like the effect is moving upwards indefinitely over time. If we take a look at it, you can see that that's what's happening. It's also doing some kind of wiggles as it goes. Then I can go over and look at the output and see that it's also being affected upwards slowly over time. It's really fine grained right now, but that's okay, it's gonna look good in the final output. If I jump over to my dungeon scene in play mode, we can see the effect so far. 
It doesn't look too much like Hite's yet, but it's getting there. Before I fix it, I want to show you one key parameter that we can mess with. If we take this cell density way down, the effect becomes much less fine-grained, and you can see it actually looks more like a water effect than a heat haze. So I just wanted to show you that, that the starting point of this effect can actually lead to many different things. Now we're going to put this back to 50 and head back to the shader graph. So the next thing I want to do is constrain the effect to the hot part of the screen, which in our case is going to be the bottom half. So I have to grab my UV nodes, copy-paste them up above, and get the Y. I feed that into a smooth step and put in some numbers so that I get a nice gradient in the middle of the screen. Since I want the effect to be on the bottom part of the screen, I have to feed this into a 1 minus to get it inverted. I'll then take our noise output and multiply it by the output from this 1 minus node. That will make the noise only show up on the bottom part of the screen. As you can see from the output, that's what we see. If I jump over to the game view, you can see the effect's working pretty well. It already looks a lot better, but it's a bit abrupt. I don't really like how, exactly how it's looking. So I'm going to come back to the graph and change my numbers a little bit to get a little bit of a smoother gradient. Yeah, I definitely like that a lot better. Lastly, I want to blur my output. Now, this might be a little extreme depending on what kind of effect you're going for, so it's totally optional, but I'll go ahead and show you how to do it. Now, we only need to blur in the horizontal direction. So I'll take the coordinates that we've already created, feed them into an add node and a subtract node. Then both of those I'll drive from a vector 2, where I can set the x to some small amount and leave y alone. Copying the sampler twice, I feed in my new adjusted UVs into that, and now I'm sampling my main pixel, as well as one slightly to the left and slightly to the right. I'm going to then average them, so I have to multiply these color outputs to shrink them a little bit so that when I add them back together, I get a nice average. I feed the left and the right copies from a vector 1 that I'm going to set to 0.25, and then the main color I'm going to feed with a value of 0.5. That gives the center color a little bit more of a stronger influence, and the two outer ones are a little bit weaker. I can then add up all the outputs from these multiplies, and I get a nice horizontally blurred image. Now, if you remember, I only want to blur in the area that's being affected by the heat haze. So I'll take that one minus node we set up a while ago, drag it over here into a preview node to get it into the right place. I can then multiply that by our color output, and then I feed that preview also into a one minus to invert it, and feed our original color into a multiply node that is against the one minus. I then have to add these together to get them to combine into a total image. Jumping back into my game view, we can see the final product. I think it looks pretty good. I can pause it and zoom in to take a look at how the blur is affecting the flames. I made it a little more subtle. You could be more aggressive with it if you wanted to be. In next week's tutorial, I'll be covering how to embed math into art. And one of the demos I'll show is this one where I'm affecting the flames only with the heat haze effect. The last thing I want to show is this effect in the 3D scene. Now here, camera placement is really important. In my case, I've set it up to be around the middle of the screen instead of the bottom. But if you can't get that camera in the perfect spot, it's not going to work. How to set up full screen effects in the Universal Render Pipeline will be in a future video, but it's already in written form on my website, gamedevbuild.com. Here on YouTube, be sure to check out my shader playlist. Please subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.